my brothers and sisters Yali Madad and Ramadan Mubarak. I hope that each of you and your families, wherever they may be, are safe and well. As I had mentioned last week, our COVID-19 task force meets virtually daily to discuss the situation in the United States, the state of the Jamaat and any Jamaati interventions. I would like to share some updates with you from our discussions this past week related to the additional government economic relief and the public discussions about the reopening of the economy. But first, we are humbled and thankful for Malana Haji Imam's message to the worldwide Jamaat. I would like to begin by reading the message. Quote, My beloved spiritual children, my Jamaat is aware that the COVID-19 virus has created a global crisis that is also affecting the Jamaat worldwide. As Imam of the time, I have recommended the Jamaati and AKDN institutions and agencies to closely monitor the impact of the pandemic and to extend support and assistance to the Jamaat and the communities in which they live. The COVID-19 virus is highly contagious and every day we are witnessing the damage it is inflicting on human lives and societies. In facing this threat, it is very important that all members of my Jamaat should take personal responsibility for exercising all possible steps to protect their own good health, safety and well-being, and that of their family. Among the most critical of the measures recommended by all government and health agencies are the maintenance of the best standards of personal hygiene and practicing the notion of physical distancing. While not easy, Physical distancing is essential. It is my wish that my murids and all those among whom they live should follow these as well as other guidelines and recommendations that the government and the health authorities issue. It is my hope and prayer that in due course, work on producing vaccines and other forms of medicine will yield positive results and that we will see a gradual return to normal life in all societies. As we focus now on overcoming the present challenges, the Jamaat and all my institutions should plan to build for the future from a position of strength and wisdom. I send my most affectionate paternal, maternal loving blessings for the good health, safety and well-being of all my murids with best loving blessings for Mushkil Hassan. My Jamaat worldwide is constantly in my thoughts and in my prayers. Yours affectionately, Aga Khan, unquote. Again, we express our shukrana and, our, and are humbled to have received the message from Hazri Imam. From a health standpoint, as Malana Hazri Imam said, we want to continue to be vigilant with our social distancing efforts, especially in the face of some states trying to open in the next few weeks. We are continuing to see COVID cases in our Jamaat in all regions and therefore, we should not let our guard down. If you have to go out, please observe all the precautions. Only those required to go to work or for essential activities should go out. And older adults, those with chronic diseases and or weak immune systems should particularly continue to stay home. For the easing of restrictions in some states in the days and weeks to come does not mean that we should gather physically to either socialize and or have meals together. These types of gatherings can lead to multiple, multiple COVID cases within an extended family, and we have seen that also occur already in the Jamaat. If there are any questions or concerns, the Jamaat should reach out to the health board via the access number. COVID cases in the Jamaat are dealt with an, in a professional and confidential way with resources provided to protect individual Jamaati members and their families. Even if a Jamaati member is admitted to a hospital with the COVID-19 virus, the health board and our incredible healthcare professionals can assist the family to understand various treatments being given and the various available options. Now, there are also silver linings for which we can be grateful for during this otherwise difficult time. For example, we recognize that parents are involved in their children's lives in ways they never would have imagined two months ago. We have been in admiration of the parents who have been showering their children with warmth and compassion. Children need 
wanting compassion first more than teaching and other care. There are many ways to organize our home environment so that all members of the family feel supported, secure, and productive. On The Dot is Smiley, we have advice on producing schedules, supporting academics, and providing a positive, nurturing environment. Learning can also take place in many different ways, like teaching kids to do chores, cooking together, starting a garden, and even help, having them help us with, with our own work. For our seniors in high school, many of you, along with your families, are currently making choices about which college to attend this fall. We understand that the current environment and any unexpected hardships may make these decisions more difficult and confusing than usual. Moreover, we are learning every day about colleges that are extending their decision and deposit deadlines, some that are increasing financial aid and scholarships to students, and still other schools that are scrambling to fill seats for the fall semester. Given this context, we would like to remind you about a quote from a speech by Malana Hazrimam in Osh, Kyrgyz Republic in 2002 that illuminates the importance of education despite the economic uncertainties we are facing today. Quote, there is no better investment that individual, individuals, parents, and the nation can make than an investment in education of the highest possible quality. Such investments are reflected and endure in the formation of the kind of social conscience that our world so desperately needs." Unquote. So before making any final decisions about college enrollment, we encourage families to exhaust all options possible, including one, remaining in frequent and direct contact with the college's financial aid office, communicating to them any sudden or unexpected financial hardship you may be experiencing and the gap this might cause in the cost of attendance. Two, negotiating financial aid awards with the college's admissions office. Three, applying for additional scholarships. Many small scholarships can add up to significant savings. Four, having the student find part-time or work-study options on campus. And five, requesting an extension on the May 1st decision date so that you can continue to review and monitor your situation. I know these are challenging times, but it is critically important that we make decisions with a long-term view as this is just a short-term crisis. Please remember that your education is going to carry you, your family, and the Jamaat for a lifetime. And remember that Hazim has said that we should plan to build for the future from a position of strength and wisdom. So please do not shortchange yourself. Please reach out to the Education Board if you need advice. For those of us at home, due to a job loss or closure of our workplaces, let's take Hazri Mam's guidance about building for the future to heart. Perhaps you can use this time to improve your English. Take online courses to learn about subjects that interest you. Utilize this time to invest in the future by, for example, taking out an hour a day to learn a new skill. You can also register for classes offered via the Jamati Skills Initiative platforms. Let's use this time to build for that stronger future. This week, we also saw the government provide additional funding for the Paycheck Protection Plan and the Economic Injury Disaster Loans. It is imperative that eligible Jamaati members apply as quickly as possible before the funding runs out. You can apply at our own credit unions or other community banks where you have a relationship. The Economic Planning Board or EPB has shared advisories with the Jamaat which are posted on the AICC website and EPB is also available to provide individual advice to Jamaati members. Finally, we want to extend our heartfelt and sincere appreciation for the thousands of volunteers who are working tirelessly to support the Jamaat. We are honored to serve with you and most grateful for your time and commitment. I also wish to remind the Jamaat that we are one Jamaat. No one should ever feel alone. We are in this situation together and we are here to help each other. If you need any support, please I urge you to call the access desk at 844-552-2237.
In the end, I humbly wish to remind you again to continue to ground ourselves in hope and faith and take comfort in the blessings from our beloved Imam. Through the toughest of times, our faith has carried us along. This situation is no different. So let us remain optimistic that with our Imam's guidance and blessings, better days are ahead of us. And during this blessed month of Ramadan, let us all pray for the healing and upliftment of the worldwide Jamaat and humanity at large. Ameen. I wish you and your family good health and hope that you enjoy our program today. Music is the sound of our soul. Many of us use music as a way to escape from reality. Others use it to relax, while some use music to connect with the divine. Sangeet ki ye khasiyat hai ki hum sab iski khubsurati ke zariye apne dil ka hal bayan kar sakte hain. The sound of music comes to life through various instruments. The beautiful and soothing sound of the rabab a musical string instrument originating in Central Asia has played a very important role in the lives of Ismaili Murids. How can we use music to connect with our Creator? By the Mardam Badakhshon, Bo Unwoni Rabob Lap Mamuliat. Chijat Rabob. در دو کلمه از دفریشه حربی رب خداوندت بوب در ماشا رو بوب نه ات رب بوب رب دروازه پروردگار تمام لبند چون که صفت کشت ماش مرد من وقت قدیم تر نو بسته هست مطرب هر خاندان تصد رب بوب ار چیز ار دیول اویزون در چهار که اوی رب بوب دوان مطمئن پبت هر جاسد در اوی پبت چوری که استم دی قوم ودم نوازند داوید خط خوردید خود زمین کرد بخوام دید چی جات مقدس نایت ماش نزدیک ترین ماش نخست امام امام مرتضی علی ریت اد ماش خو امام ماش فوق وقت است ماش وجود است The gift of the rabab presented to Maulana Hazrat Imam symbolizes devotion to the imamat from the time of Hazrat Ali through the present living Imam. Agar aaj hume hamare Imam ko tawfa pesh karne ka mauka mile, to hum kya pesh karna chahenge? How can we express our devotion to our Imam, who works so tirelessly for the upliftment of his spiritual children? Across diverse traditions in the Ismaili Tariqa, devotion can be expressed through ginans, qasidas, zikr, ibada or even verses of poetry. In the Central Asian tradition, Ismaili Dai and poet Nasir Khusra was a key figure in preserving the Ismaili Tariqa for Marids. His devotional poetry inspired the Central Asian Jamaat to keep the love of the Imam alive in their hearts, even in the physical absence of the Imam. Nasser Akustra reveals the secret of the Master and the Disciple in the following poem. The Master and the Disciple by Nasser Akustra The Master turned my night into broad daylight with proofs as clear as radiant sunlight. Since he made me drink from the water of life, death has become quite insignificant to me. When I looked from the corner of his eye, I saw the earth rotating beneath my feet. He showed me the visible and hidden worlds, both located in one place, my own body. When I asked him to explain the secret to me, he recited its story from beginning to end. The master said, he is the Lord of the time 
chosen by God from men and jinns. I was born into a Muslim family, linked by heredity to the Prophet Muhammad. May peace be upon him and his family. Historically, Ismailis are united by a common allegiance to the living hereditary Imam of the time in the progeny of Islam's last and final Prophet, Muhammad. May peace be upon him through his daughter, Fatima, and her husband, Hazrat Ali, the Prophet's cousin and the first Shia Imam. Imams, whether they are Shia or Sunni, they, are, they have a duty to serve people. That is the nature of Imamat. And therefore, uh, in countries where uh, the Ismaili Imamat can bring support and help, uh, it is our duty to do so. And we are very happy to do so in Central Asia, like we are doing so in the Indian subcontinent, we are doing so in East Africa, in West Africa. So it's part of the mandate of any Imam. But it's a big mistake to think that you can do development only for Muslim communities. Many countries have mixed communities. And therefore you have to do development for all the people within a given area. Whether they're Muslim or Christian or Jewish or Hindu or Sikh, you have a, what I would call a civil responsibility. We have been blessed with the continued guidance and protection of the Imam for over 1400 years. Throughout his Imamat, Malana Hazri Imam has upheld his commitment to do everything possible for the upliftment of his Jamaat. For each of us today, what does it mean to have a present living Imam of the time? Having Hazri Imam means that we are blessed with a living guide who is concerned with our well-being our material and spiritual progress, who prays for us, who worries about us, who thinks of us every day. He is with us through happiness while offering blessings of Mushkil Asan in times of difficulty. Hamare Imam ki bepanha mohabbat hume zindagi ke har mushkil daur ka samna karne ki himmat deti hai. Having the Imam of the time means that we are surrounded by unconditional love. Indeed, our Imam loves us more, much, much more than we can ever love him. Jahan tak devotion ka taluk hai, aqidat ka taluk hai, Hazar Imam ki guidance pe aqidat aur Hazar Imam ki imamat pe aqidat jo hai, wohi humare Ismaili firke ke logon ko साथ लेकर चलते हैं और हम लोग जो है मुश्किल से मुश्किल दौर में एक दूसरे के साथ मिलकर एक यूनिटी के साथ इन मुश्किल दौरों का सामना करते हैं और इसकी वजह यही है कि हमारी अतात है हम जो है अपने इमाम की एक एक गाइडेंस को एक एक ब्लेसिंग्स को बहुत ज़्यादा महसूस करते हैं और उसका मैनिफेस्टेशन जो इस मुश्किल दौर में हम देख रहे हैं वैसा मैंने आज तक कभी नहीं देखा हमारी कौमों ने इससे पहले भी बहुत तकलीफ़ें उठाई हैं और हमेशा इन मुश्किलों से और भी मजबूत होकर उभरी हैं और उसकी वजह यही है कि हमारी अकीदत और हमारा डिवोशन हमारे इमामों की तरफ है हमारे प्रेजेंट इमाम की तरफ हमेशा रहा है आई रियली मिस जमात खाना किरिया एंड वॉल्टियरिंग बट आई कीप माई फेथ अलाइव बाई बींग एन आई सी टीचर एंड आई हैव द वंडरफुल अपॉर्चुनिटी to teach um, the youngest members of the Jamaat and um, inshallah they will carry us, uh, our Jamaat into the future um, by 
<clears throat> becoming ambassadors of our faith. I feel sad and I pray so the virus can go away so we can all meet, meet each other in the Jamaat Khana. I would be lost without his hidayat and guidance. To have a present living, living Imam in my life means I am protected, I am guided, and I am secure. I also feel to have a present living Imam means that I have an Imam who loves me. He loves me much more than I can ever love him. It also means he cares about me. He remembers me every minute of the day. He's worried about me. He cares about my well-being, my security, my safety. I think to have a present living Imam means my soul is connected with his Noor. And it's a blessing in my life. I, I can't imagine my life without having an Imam in my life. I would like on this occasion also to tell my Jamaat here in Tajikistan but also across the river that the love of the Imam knows no physical boundaries, no mountain, no river, no desert can stop the love of the Imam for his Jamaat worldwide. <laughs>
The spring of 1995 thus brought renewed hope for the beleaguered people of the region. Not just because the relief effort was being supplemented by a long-term development program, but also because for the inheritors of the tradition of Nasser Khusro, the Ismaili Muslim Jamaat of Central Asia, it would bring the first formal encounter in their recorded history with their Imam Zaman. What, after a thousand years, could prevent this encounter? The inhospitable terrain, the unpredictable weather, the formidable task and its imponderable scale. In the face of extraordinary logistical challenges, volunteers mobilized from Jamaats across the globe under the leadership of the Council for the United Kingdom and joined their Central Asian sisters and brothers with characteristic dedication, courage, zeal and efficiency. After their meeting in Dushanbe, Molana Hazar Imam and President Imam Ali Rahmanov formalized the relationship forged between Tajikistan and the Aga Khan Development Network since 1992 in an agreement for cooperation and development. The agreement enables more effective use of the network's resources in the country. It is similar to the accords and protocols that the network has concluded with several countries in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. Later that evening, Hazar Imam, speaking at a dinner given in his honor in Dushanbe, describe what the agreement stood for. We have a shared recognition that peace is essential, indeed is a precondition for any improvement in the quality of life of the people of Tajikistan. We have a shared recognition of the need to harness new human and material resources in a resource poor world to the future of Tajikistan as that harnessing is another precondition for progress. We have a shared recognition that our increasingly free market world is propelling countries, societies and institutions to merit-based competition. And that competence in, our, in all our undertakings is yet another precondition for development. We have a shared recognition that with the differences in peoples languages and faith that history has bequeathed Tajikistan and most other countries of our globe. Building on pluralism, as affirmed in your new constitution, is one more precondition for progress.
In his Irshad Mubarak, Molana Hazrimam touched on concerns close to the hearts of his murids and on events deeply imprinted in their memories and in those of our brother and sister Muslims who had gathered together for the occasion. My beloved spiritual children and my brothers and sisters in Islam, this is an historic occasion and I will always value it because it is my first visit to Tajikistan. Other reasons also make it historic. It is without doubt one of the most delicate times in Tajikistan's history. In the first place, this country, like others, which for many decades was part of the Soviet Union, now must establish itself and seek its way forward as a fully independent country, part of the world's community of nations. And this must be achieved in a fundamentally changing world environment where forces such as the market economy need to be tamed and made to serve the people of Tajikistan. Secondly, there is urgent need to bring peace back to Tajikistan so that all can live without fear in a civil society and hopefully will participate in creating a strong national consensus towards modern principles of statehood, including the integrity of the state, multi-party democracy, a free market economy, and equal rights and privileges for all under the Constitution, no matter what the ethnic, linguistic, or religious background of the individual. And thirdly, Tajikistan as a country with a substantial majority of Muslims will need to find its way, as do other countries within the Ummah, to live within the ethics of our faith while contributing to the enhancement of society in addressing the problems of our modern world. I hope and count on the government of Tajikistan and all na other national and international agencies and organizations that have Tajikistan's interest at heart to join us in our endeavors for the future. Keeping in mind that in order for countries, institutions, organizations and programs to be effective, they will need to be increasingly competent in whatever they are doing. For today, and even more so for our generations to come, we will be living in an increasingly meritocratic world. No time can be lost in the interest of all Tajiks in giving up those actions which without any doubt will damage the future of Tajikistan if they are allowed to be continued, such as killing to resolve differences or evil social habits such as growing, distributing, trading or consuming drugs or acquiescing that these things be done. Such actions or habits can only result in prolonged damage to Tajik society. And it is my deepest hope and prayer that your faith, your intellect, your wisdom, and your pragmatism will bring you together, forgiving if not forgetting, the pain and the differences of the past to a consensus on the principles on which the progress of Tajikistan should be predicated in the years ahead. Be assured that my prayers will accompany you every day as you move down this road. And wherever I can, whenever I can, the human and material resources of the Imamat will be there to assist you, if you so wish, in achieving your goals. To all my spiritual children who are here today, and to your families, wherever they may be, I give my most affectionate loving blessings. And to my brothers and sisters in Islam, 
be assured that my deep and heartfelt prayers are with you for your peace, your unity, and for your happiness. I also pray for the eternal peace and rest of the souls of all the deceased members of your families. Kanavada. Irshad Mubarak, Maulana Hazir Imam, Shah Karim Al Husayni Agha Khan, Dushanbe, 24 May, Sal 1995. Baradaran Khan, Haran Muslimanam. اعتماد داشته باشید که دعاهای قلبی و عمیق من برای آسایش آسایش تگی شما برای متحدی شما برای خوشبختی شما همراه شماست من این چنین برای آرامش روحی ابدی ارواح‌های گذشته خانواده‌های شما دعا می‌کنم خانه‌تان From Dushanbe, Hazrimam, accompanied by President Rachmanov, flew to Tajikistan's easternmost province of Gorno Badakhshan. It is here that the Aga Khan Development Network commenced its first initiatives in Tajikistan. Nestled amongst the Pamir Mountains, known also as the Roof of the World, Korog, the provincial capital, was the scene of an exceptionally moving welcome. Honoring the traditional Central Asian ceremony of greeting, Hazar Imam accepted a morsel of bread which he dipped in salt in symbolic recognition of the two essentials of life, that which is of most value. Korog citizens lined the streets and thronged the airport to witness the Imam's arrival. Shortly after his arrival, Molana Hazar Imam addressed civic leaders and explained why the network had focused its initial efforts in Badakhshan. The welfare of the people of Goma Badakhshan has weighed very heavily on my mind, not just because of the large number of Ismailis who live here, but more broadly because of the example that Goma Badakhshan represents. Populations who must find their way in rapidly changing circumstances. After years of intellectual and to some degree physical isolation, the challenge to meet change is stern. 
It is a time when experiment experimentation with new approaches is not just possible, but necessary. It is a time of new possibilities, but also of new stresses. The unity of the great majority of the people of Dona Badakshan may paradoxically present the most profound challenge. Like many new political units around the world, Dona Badakshan is too small to be economically self-sufficient. The viability of Dona Badakshan depends on the development of regional linkages that would open markets, facilitate the creation of commercial and social service systems, allow advantage to be taken of complementarities of resources among neighbors, and expand the range of opportunities for using, for example, the impressive human resources of the autonomous oblast. If Golna Balakshan and its neighbors look only inward, the possibilities for future development are severely constrained. If they look outward, much more is possible. We see around the world far too many examples of regions where the rule of law has collapsed, where parochial interests have been allowed to undercut a broader conception of human cooperation. The former Yugoslavia is a horrific illustration of this short-sightedness. The Caucasus is another. Rwanda and Burundi, a third. There may have been a time when human beings could find, could not find ways to settle their differences without resort to killing. But human society has developed the ability to move beyond that primitive state. We cannot stand by without comment when it slips back into chaos. Essential to the creation of a higher order of human relationships is the acceptance of pluralism. Within the Muslim world, for example, thoughtful and heartfelt differences exist in regard to the interpretation of the faith. Nothing is gained by imposing one interpretation on people disposed to another. Indeed, the effect of such coercion is a denial of the principles of the faith. Religious plurality in the Ummah is a tribute to the rich richness of the faith and a source of its strength. Shia and Sunni can exist and cooperate, true to their own interpretations of Islam, but confederates in the faith. Similarly, people of particular ethnic, cultural, or political groups must grow beyond narrow conceptions of clan rivalry to an acceptance of differences. Human genius is found in its variety, which is a work of Allah. I share with you these ideas not out of a sense that they are appropriate only for Dona Badakshan and Tajikistan. Indeed, if they had such narrow applicability, I should be inclined to be mute at this point, waiting until after I had had the chance to see more of Dona Badakshan and its people before offering counsel. But these ideas of the importance of pluralism, of striving for peace, of building civil society are not limited in time and space. They have had applicability in every country in which I have worked <coughs> since assuming the Imamate in 1957. Countries that have emerged from colonial rule to assume their independence. Countries that did not exist at all in 1957, as well as countries with more con continuity of constitutional form. Later that evening, Ali Mamad Niyoz Mamadov, the chairman of the region of Gonobadakshan, greeted Hazri Mam with moving and poetic words of welcome.
که آیا این خواب شیرین نیست؟ Our hearts are full of happiness and times after times we question us isn't it a dream? و ما را باید درست فهمید زیرا قبلا چونین عادیسه را هیچ کس برای خود تصورم کرده نمی توانید But I'm sure that you understand us and our feelings The thing is that no one here in Balakhshan could believe that such things could happen و من از نام مردم بدخشان به زبان شعر می گویم آمدی زود مرا از دری کاشانه من نفس ایست که دیدار تو را از مانم مشکن کاسه لبریز و فاداری و میر بیش کنم تا زیرو حرف خوشت ارمانم And as the poet put uh, of poet says You came, don't go so soon Not enough breath to fool our wish to see you. And uh, I did not translate the ver- two other verses, but it's also uh, asking you to come again and again. <laughs> support is to change a time of pain and sadness into hope for the future. In the winter of 1992, AKF formed the Pamir Relief and Development Program, Tajikistan's first indigenous non-governmental organization. Since then, With the support of government agencies of several Western countries, PRDP has distributed food, fuel and clothing throughout the region. Whilst Hazrimam continued his official and institutional engagements, the Jamaat proceeded with preparations for their historic mulaqat. Reeds walked mile upon mile, across mountains, throughout the night, in rain and icy cold, spending the remaining hours huddled together under blankets and rugs.
As the morning mist rose and hours turned to minutes, the assembled Jamaat at Poshnev on the outskirts of Khorov sat with the patience of a thousand years since Nasir Khusro first set foot in Badakhshan, awaiting their Imam in contemplative anticipation. Wisdom accompanied wonderment as Khalifas, the Jamaat's religious functionaries, together with the senior most among them, the Shah Kalan, waited to receive Molana Hazri Imam. Here, as in Ishkashim a few days later, Morana Hazrimam's Ishad was heard by members of the Jamaat gathered together across a narrow stretch of river on the northern border of Afghanistan. My beloved spiritual children and my brothers and sisters in Islam, today is a day of special happiness for me. As this is not only my first visit to Badakhshan, but it is also the first time in many centuries that the Imam of the time of the Ismaili Muslim has had the opportunity to see and to be in the presence of members of the Ismaili Jamaat in Badakhshan and amongst other brothers and sisters of Muslims. Let me repeat. This is a day of very special values. I am aware of all the time and effort and voluntary service which innumerable people in government, in government service, and individuals from all walks of life have offered to make my visit in this gathering possible. And I express to all of them my warm and deep gratitude and my admiration for this collective effort. Today, Ummah is constituted by hundreds of millions of people who are Muslim and who are bound to their faith by the Shahada. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And yet, over the centuries of our history, have come to live in different climates, speak different languages, 
live in different political contexts and who differentiate in some interpretations of their faith. Within the Ummah, the Ismaili community reflects much of the same pluralism. And I want to take this occasion, therefore, to say that whereas some might be convinced that plurality within the Islamic world is undesirable or is in some way a weakness, I would like to share with you today my conviction, my very deep conviction, that the plurality of the peoples of the Muslim world is not just an irreversible historical fact, but it is a strength for which we must be grateful, a strength that should be constructively harnessed to the building of this and other nations within the ethics of Islam. The Holy Quran says, O mankind, lo, no. we have created you male and female, and have made you nations and tribes, that ye may know one another. Lo, no. the noblest of you in the sight of Allah is the best in conduct. Lo, no. Allah is knower, aware. Nearly 40 years have passed since I succeeded my late grandfather to the hereditary Muhammad of the Ismaili Muslims. And during these four decades, much has been achieved, significant institutions have been created, and meaningful programs have been implemented. While it is clear that every country and every institution has its human and material limitations, as do those entities and programs under my leadership. It is also true that I wish them to serve the Jamaat in Tajikistan and those amongst whom the Jamaat lives as vigorously, as generously, as competently, and as effectively as possible. It will be our endeavor to serve the Ismaili Jamaat in Tajikistan as well as our brothers and sisters in Islam, to overcome the problems which you face today, and inshallah to set Tajik society as quickly as possible onto a stable and vigorous course of peace and well-being. To all my spiritual children who are here today, and to all your families, wherever they may be, and some are outside Tajikistan. I give my most affectionate loving blessings and to my brothers and sisters in Islam here and in those areas of Badakhshan, which I will not be visiting. Be assured that my deep and heartfelt prayers are with you for your peace, your unity, and your happiness. I pray also for the eternal peace and rest of the souls of all the deceased members of your families. The Jamaat presented Hazri Imam with gifts symbolic of their endeavor to keep the faith alive over the centuries. The Rubab, a string instrument which accompanied recitals of devotional poetry known as Maddo. Manuscripts, including Nasser Khusro's Wajhedin, which taught that the faith called for an intellectual search. To all my beloved spiritual children and to my Muslim brothers and sisters, at the end of this Jamaqat, I convey to you my prayers for Mushkilas, for peace, for the resolution of your worldly problems, for strength in the practice of your faith, and for unity amongst all of you. And though I will be leaving you physically in some days, remember that at all times you are in my heart, in my thoughts, and in my prayers. Amen.
طریق سخاوت از طریق بخشندگی اللهم صل الله محمد و آل محمد Within hours of this first mulakat, in the shadow of the mountains which sheltered Nasser Khusro, occurred another moving encounter, revealing yet again the depth of attachment between the traditions of Badakhshan and the guidance of the Imam Zaman. Amongst the most literate and highly educated in the country, the people of Badakhshan found, in the midst of turmoil, an opportunity to create a university in the former Communist Party headquarters. The very creation of the University of Khorog by intellectuals taking refuge from civil strife in Dushanbe is testimony to the spirit that moves the people of Badakhshan. Despite their meager resources and desperate situation, a courageous group of academics established in the midst of the civil war, an institution whose destiny now sought clearer articulation. In an emotional address to the students and the faculty, Molana Hazrimam expounded on the concept of a university within the tradition of the faith and emphatically underlined his commitment to help make the institution a regional center of excellence. In thinking about the University of Kharog, I link it to the memories, the knowledge that we have of the great universities of the Muslim world. And we have to remember, I think, that the greatest times in our history, in various parts of the world, were always linked to the existence of one or several great universities whether it was Al-Azhar, whether it was the University of Baghdad, whether it was the Madrasas of Samarkand, Bukhara, whether it was Baghdad University. There is no time in Islamic history where our society was not in its greatest times linked to a great intellectual center. What is interesting in the history of these universities is that they drew knowledge from everywhere. They did not limit their search for knowledge. The next matter I wish to emphasize today is that in the history of the practice of the faith of Islam, Hazrat Ali emphasized many times the importance of human intellect in the practice of the faith. And the Shia tradition, generally speaking, has attached enormous importance to the development of human intellect as being simply another facet of the practice of man's faith and of his understanding of the greatness of Allah. Therefore, the development of human intellect in society and in the practice of faith within society is a matter to which I attach the greatest importance. If it is your wish to make this university a significant intellectual center, I will support you day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. Build this university into an intellectual jewel. It may take time, it may take effort, but I assure you, Every day it will be worthwhile. And I look forward to working with you as soon as possible to bring to this university the resources it needs to be able to plan properly its future. But it is your university.
It is your university. It is your university. Murgab, on a desolate plateau over 4,000 meters above sea level near the Chinese border, is home to people of Badakhshan whose heritage blends Kyrgyz, Chinese, Tajik and Russian cultures. The harsh terrain, the remoteness and altitude of this settlement and the collapse of the food distribution network had left its inhabitants in dire need on the edge of starvation. Their survival, over these recent painful months, was due to the initiatives launched at Molana Hazrimam's direction by the Aga Khan Foundation. At every mulakat, the silent homage of a grateful Jamaat and their fellow Muslims was rendered all the more poignant by the depth of meaning contained in the ayats of the Holy Quran recited in Hazrimam's presence. Riding over the seething winds that whistled across the plateau of Murgab, the words of Surah Nur echoed against the mountains, as brilliant in their symbolism as the blinding sunlight that shone down on the meditative gathering. And in Murgab, as at each other mulakat, despite the chilly spring weather, warm sentiments rooted deep in the Jamaat's history found emotional expression in the maddo recited before the Imam. For many years, the Jamaat in the Pamirs has been in my heart, in my thoughts, and in my prayers, as have been your brothers and sisters in Islam. And I have been aware of the difficulties which you have faced and which you continue to face, and for which, inshallah, in the years ahead, working in peace and harmony, and all together, we will be able to address, hopefully, to improve the quality of life, not only of yourselves, but also of your future generations. Today, the Ummah is constituted by hundreds of millions of people who are Muslim and who are bound to their faith by the Shahada, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. And yet, who over the centuries of our history have come to live in different climates, speak different languages, live in different political contexts, and who differentiate in some interpretations of their faith. Within the Ummah, the Ismaili community reflects much of the same pluralism. And I want to take this occasion, therefore, to say that whereas some might be convinced that plurality within the Islamic world is undesirable or is in some way a weakness, I would like to share with you my conviction 
my very deep conviction that the plurality of the peoples of the Muslim world is not just an irreversible historical fact, but it is a strength for which we must be grateful, a strength that should be constructively harnessed to the building of this and other nations within the ethics of Islam. Let us remember that these differences date back to the earliest days of the revelation of Islam. The Holy Quran says, O mankind, lo, we have created you male and female, and have made you nations and tribes, that you may know one another. Lo, the noblest of you, in the sight of Allah, is the best in conduct. Lo, Allah is knower, aware. So the Quran itself recognizes differences amongst Muslims, and it simply says, Allah will judge you according to the way you live your lives. As I look to the future of the Ismaili community worldwide, living in many parts of Central Asia and in more than 25 different countries, and as I look to the future of Tajikistan with its variegated population, and as I look at the Ummah, I conclude that every and all those peoples, if they wish to achieve a better life for themselves in the generations ahead, must absolutely achieve peace within their societies. And because we are Muslim, conflict must be replaced by a peace which is predicated on the ethics of our faith. We must not kill to resolve differences, whatever they may be. They must be resolved, as, of our, as I have said, within the ethic of our faith, through dialogue, through compassion, through tolerance, through gener generosity and forgiveness. These are the pillars on which to build a strong society in modern times, not through weapons. And let us hope, indeed, seek to ensure that never again weapons will have any place in our society. They must be replaced by constitutional government. It will be our endeavor to serve the Ismaili Jamaat in Tajikistan as well as all our brothers and sisters in Islam to overcome the problems which you face today and inshallah to set Tajik society as quickly as possible onto a stable and vigorous course of well-being. In recent years, there have been severe problems in Badakhshan, insufficient food, reduction in the quality of education and health care, increasing poverty. These are matters to which my Jamaat, our brothers in Islam, the government and I, must work together to solve. Society in many parts of the world is accustomed to thinking that government, institutions and individuals cannot work in a collaborative manner. My conviction is that here in Badakhshan we can prove that government, institutions and individuals all working collaboratively towards common goals to improve the quality of life is a real, dependable, realizable objective. And it is one that I have set for the Imamate institutions and, of course, for myself. Be assured that my prayers will accompany you every day as you move down this road. And wherever I can, whenever I can, the human and material resources of the Imamate will be here to assist you, if you wish, in achieving your goals. To all my spiritual children who are here today, and to your families, wherever they may be, in Murgab, or in other parts of Badakhshan, or even other parts of Tajikistan, or even from outside Tajikistan, I give my most affectionate, loving blessings. 
and I would wish you to convey those blessings to your families and your jamaats when you return to them. And to my brothers and sisters in Islam, here and in those areas of Badakhshan which I will unfortunately not be visiting, be assured that my deep and heartfelt prayers are with you for your peace, your unity, your happiness, for your worldly success, for your good health, and for Mushkil Asan. I also pray for the eternal peace and rest of the souls of all the deceased members of your families. The feeling with which Molana Hazrimam was presented with a traditional Kyrgyz hat was reciprocated in Hazrimam's wearing of the hat over the Imamat robe as he departed the Mulakat site. Allahumma salli Allah Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad Allahumma salli Allah Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad Allahumma salli Allah Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad The earnest hospitality of the civic authorities in Murghab gave Hazimam an opportunity to see a display of traditional Kyrgyz horsemanship. In this too, it seemed, people of a common faith could find links between geography and culture. Yes, they have it in Hunza also. Yes, Hunza, Gilgit, all Central Asia. Mulana Hazrimam's visits across the country were followed by a return to Dushanbe, where, among his meetings with leaders, were an exchange with Muslim scholars, scientists, and academics. <laughs> right, Hazar Imam raised the question of Islam's impact on the world and the need to preserve our values against culturally destructive influences. There is in the Muslim world a process of what I would call occidentalization. Some aspects of this occidentalization may be unavoidable. But maybe we can reverse the trend. Maybe we can reverse the trend. 
That is, we can impose or at least impact the process of change through our own culture. شاید ما بتوانیم این پروسه تغییر دیالگونی رو از طریق فرهنگ خودمون به اون طرف اثر و نفوذ برسانیم. And the question is, can that be done? Is it desirable? And how can it be done? سوال این است که این ممکن است شدن این امکان پذیر است و چگونه این کار را باید انجام داد؟ And my feeling is that it would be a tragedy for the future of the Muslim world if we allow occidentalization just to run over us like a tidal wave taking everything with it. این برای ما یک تراژدی خواهد بود اگر قرضدگی همچون یک موجی بر همه چیز ما بگذرد. یعنی همه جنبه های زندگی ما رو فرا بگیرد. That doesn't mean that we have to turn everything into a theological debate. این به این معنی نیست که ما همه چیز رو به یک بحث تیولوگ تبدیل کنیم هر بحثی رو Because I would prefer to talk about Islamic civilization. من ترجیح می دهم که درباره فرهنگ و تمدن اسلامی صحبت بکنیم. Islamic cultures in the plural. و درباره فرهنگ های اسلامی به طور جمع صحبت کنیم. And look at the ummah as having consisted of pluralism and diversity. و به امت اسلام با دید یا از دیدگاه چند فرهنگی و پلورالیزم نگاه بکنیم. To me it is an insult to the human race to pretend that a faith such as ours reveals itself only in one form of culture. این برای ما یک اهانت است، توهین است که اگر دینی همچون مذهب ما، دین ما خودش رو از یک دیدگاه فقط جلب کند به مردم در مردم مردم نشون داده شود. And rather than normatizing the future and delegitimizing the past, I prefer to legitimize all of the past. به جای اینکه ما آینده رو با یک فرم مخصوص میگن فرم نرم با یک نرمه مخصوص پیش ببریم و گذشته رو از دیدگاه اعتبار ساقط بکنیم بیاید کد آینده رو و ببینیم آیا همه ما به یک موضوع در یک موضوع فکر ما به یک موضوع هست یعنی همه ما در باز نگرانی ما یک چیز داریم It was these same concerns that Hazri Imam discussed with the late Mufti of Tajikistan. The education of the next generation of Muslims who will live in a considerably changed environment. The basis of common understanding across the diverse communities that the Central Asian Ummah represents. These were some of the themes that were developed in the conversations with Tajikistan's Muslim leaders. I come to this visit and to this gathering with the hope that, as Imam of the Ismaili community, I can be of some help in furthering the efforts of Tajikistan's people in improving their lives. First, in response to the need to enhance the strength of Tajikistan's universities in certain critical disciplines, I would be willing to create an education fund to support training in the English language and economics. Such a fund would extend over a two-year interval and be focused particularly on faculty training. It, yeah. would be, it would be available to universities throughout Tajikistan. Second, recognizing the specific possibilities at the University of Kharov, I am prepared to help fund a long-term development plan
for that university. This plan would, I hope, lead the University of Kharag to a position as a major regional resource with a strong teaching and research program in disciplines of particular importance for the people of Tajikistan. Third, convinced of the importance of opening regional transport linkages for Tajikistan, I would like to cooperate with the government of Tajikistan in planning for a road to lead from Tajikistan through Afghanistan to Pakistan. Considerable study will be required of the technical and economic features of such a project. But the need is clear, and I shall do my best to support the efforts of the governments involved. Fourth, in the interest of forwarding Tajikistan's efforts to participate successfully in the market economy, I offer to help create a Badakhshan Development Fund. This fund would be a joint initiative of the Arkhan Fund for Development and the government of Tajikistan. The activities of the joint initiative might involve efforts in industry, mining, financial services, or infrastructure. <laughs> These four initiatives and others that might be envisioned in the future are conceived to address the needs of the people of Tajikistan in a manner consistent with the principles of action of the imamate. If these initiatives, President Rathmanov, are found by your government also to be consistent with the appropriate principles of the government of Tajikistan and institutions within its boundaries, then real progress can be realized. The footprints of our dying Nasser Khusro were as much in the soil of Central Asia as was the essence of his teaching in the hearts and souls of Murids over centuries. That teaching, a thousand years ago, was founded on an ethical vision which gave primacy to the role of the intellect guided by a living hereditary Imam in the line of Hazrat Ali. Neither songs nor music, neither words nor tears, quite captured the depth of emotion that pervaded this historic encounter which the Imam Zaman enabled. From a thousand years ago into the next millennium.
refers very often to nature as a reflection of Allah's power of creation. And it says, look at the mountains, look at the rivers, look at the trees, look at the flowers, as evidence of Allah's love for the people whom he has created. Today, I look at this environment and I say today, I believe Allah is smiling upon you. May his smile always be upon you. 